What up YouTube? Dungeon Master, back with another video. This week we're gonna make the gate to the front of our carnival. <laughs> what are you doing? Simple project. You could do it in an afternoon, which is why I'm spending my week outside now. So stick around and after the intro we'll get right into it. For this project, I'm just going to be using some leftover bricks that I had from a previous project. Hey. Texturing the bricks is very simple. You just pour them into a container with some stones and shake it around until you get a texture that seems appealing to you. I decided that I wanted the gate to be about three inches wide, um, it, to have the pass through be about three inches wide. And, you know, it was just a happenstance that this piece happened to be just a little over six inches. So that ended up being pretty much right in the center of what I wanted to do. Now begins the long and arduous task of stacking bricks one by one, using a little bit of PVA glue to hold them together until we achieve the effect that we're looking for. I went about seven layers high on these and that seemed to be a good height. I used an alternating pattern to uh, stack the bricks. I did the same pattern, I just rotated at 90 degrees each layer. Uh, this definitely gave the best, most consistent brick look that I'd had to date on a project that I've done and despite the amount of work it took, it was well worth it. Next, I headed over to the Proxon to cut out a couple of stone caps for the top out of XPS foam. I ended up making these an inch and a quarter by an inch and a quarter, and since my uh, pillars ended up just out of happenstance being one inch by one inch, this worked out brilliantly and gave, the ni gave a nice effect to top off the pillars. And next we give our stone caps a little bit of texture using a foil ball. Thank you. 
I'm scraping away the glue from the inner corners here where the the where the rocks meet the my base and I'm just taking the back side of it here this corner and just using it to scrape away any of the glue that might have seeped out being careful not to nudge my um, pillars and just take the, the glue off of there and wipe it off on my fingers and I take this opportunity to straighten out my pillars make sure they're aligned You can also keep a wet paper towel nearby if you don't want to use your fingers, but I'm just, it just rubs off, so I don't care that much. It's just PVA glue, it's not going to hurt me. So I'm just cleaning this up as best I can before the glue sets, and it's already kind of starting to set up because I've been doing this for a few minutes. So we'll let this dry, and then when we get back, we'll do a little bit more detail. And then I clamped them up and let them sit to dry while I went to work. I thought I'd hit record here, and I'm sorry about that, but I, I poked some small skewers into the uh, foam down the center and uh, glued them in place. I missed, uh, I missed hitting the record button, which was a mistake on my part. Here, I'm cutting out some graphics that I made in Photoshop um, on some paper. I made a black line down the center so that I could score them to make folding them a little easier because I wanted a front and back. And this is going to be my banner that hangs over the entrance to the carnival. At least that's the plan. Next, I cut out uh, four lengths of string, uh, craft string, and um, glued the two halves of the carnival banner together with the string inside to finish my uh, to finish my banner to hang over the entrance. Now it's time to add a little ground texture uh, to our base and um, you can see here from me mixing this up that this, I've had this batch that I whipped up since mid-December and it's May now and it's lasted this long and it's still good after all this time. It just needed a little mixing. Um, if it dries out too much more, I'll add a little bit more of uh, water to it and uh, that'll bring it back to life. This is uh, this stuff has been great and one of these days I'll get around to making a video to show you how I made it probably when I run out of this batch. But I just use the usual techniques to um, 
to do the base and you can see them in several of my other videos um, particularly the campsite and the burial mound and once that's set up I did the usual black magic base craft on the foam in order to seal it and protect it as well as uh, to prime it to accept paint better For this project I wanted to go uh, fairly basic so I used a dark gray uh, craft paint. Um, I skipped the pewter gray this time. I figured these were a little bit more of a drab uh, object and less of a natural stone so I went with this instead. I had uh, made a trip to Michael's last week and while I was there in the paint section I found this stuff. It's um, a gel stain. Then I wanted to try on some wood, and since this project has a very small amount of wood, I figured I would give it a try on something small uh, before doing a proper experiment on it. Um, it's quite expensive, it's about $12 per bottle, but they have a selection, quite a selection of these. And I wanted to try it, just to see how it would come out. So we're going to give this a shot on our wood. Instead of using some brown paint, we're going to try this stuff today. This actually proved to be a dismal failure for this project. It wasn't nearly dark enough for what I had wanted it to look like. So I eventually went with the brown paint instead. And then we went on to dry brushing. I dry brushed the stone with a light gray and I dry brushed the ground with a light tan. In the past I had gone incredibly heavy on the light tan on the ground and I felt like that gave it too much of a difference in color. So this time I went very lightly over it. The ground uh, texture paste already has a really nice color of its own so I didn't need to change it that much and consider it lesson learned that um, the heavier the dry brushing on this, definitely the worse off. It just needed a light touch and um, it looked uh, amazing when it's done. Next I picked out a couple of uh, individual bricks on the pillars and painted them up with a, uh, a light brown and a darker brown. I actually used a khaki and a raw sienna for these and they were a great combination of colors to use on the bricks. It made them uh, stand out a little bit and broke up the monotony of them. Using a mixture of uh, Elmer's glue, distilled water, and dish detergent, I laid down some glue around the outsides of the pillars. I was going to keep the the center uh, as a dirt path to you know show that it had been you know walked on as people going through the gate and stuff, perhaps killing the grass. Um, and uh, after I laid the glue down, I sprinkled it with two layers of different kinds of turf. I used a blended turf first and uh, this is all woodland scenic stuff by the way. I used a blended turf first and then went over the top of it with a fine turf. Both of which were different colors and it gave perhaps the most realistic looking grass that I've done to date. 
on a small piece and uh, small pieces like this are a perfect uh, testing ground for new techniques uh, like this I think that you can easily recover from the mistakes on things like this it's not much work to recover from it anyway um, after that layer had uh, mostly dried I didn't wait nearly long enough but it all worked out so it's okay but um, after that initial layer had mostly dried I went back over the top with more of the glue and this helps to seal the turf in place so that it, it becomes very tough and uh, you know scraping it with a miniature or with your fingers even won't disturb it and then a quick uh, homemade uh, black wash over the top of the pillars and we're nearing completion Using a couple of drops of super glue, I adhered my banner to the posts that were sticking up out of the pillars. One thing I failed to mention earlier was to, in order to seal and protect the banner, I ended up coating it in a layer of matte Mod Podge in order to seal it so that it wouldn't get damaged or ripped easily. And I felt like this was the best way to keep it intact, and it definitely didn't add any shine to it, so it looks, uh, looks pretty damn good on the piece if you ask me. And for a few finishing touches, I dabbed some uh, different colored grass tufts in uh, PVA glue and set them on the outside of the piece. And here you have the finished piece next to some of the other stuff that we've made for this carnival and it's standing up really well next to these things and starting to look really well as a whole. Uh, the whole set together is really coming together and I'm starting to really enjoy this project. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. This was a very easy project, and as I said in the last couple videos, we're getting very close to the end of our Cursed Carnival. Hopefully in a couple of weeks, we'll be reaching the end of it. If you like what I'm doing and you wanna help support the channel, head on over to Patreon. Consider becoming a supporter for as little as a dollar a month. Every dollar spent there goes back into the channel. Hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment below. I've been the Dungeon Master. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this day. Peace.